Hello friends, welcome to Reno's Englishpedia. Today we are going to do the topic phrases, clauses and simple compound and complex sentences. Before we go into the nitty gritty of phrases, clauses and the different kinds of sentences, let us identify whether the words in these ovals are phrases or clauses. A fascinating event in a library Tea produced in Assam, who is singing a song, we met at and singing a song. I am pretty sure that most of you have guessed whether the words are phrases or clauses. But let's just verify. Yes, a fascinating event in a library and singing a song are just phrases, whereas who is singing a song, tea produced in Assam, and we met at our clauses. But why do we call them as phrases and clauses? How do we classify them as phrases and clauses? And the answer is, a phrase is a group of words that makes sense but not complete sense. It is generally a part of a sentence. When we talk about the fact that a phrase makes sense but not complete sense, we mean to say that some part is understandable by us. We understand some part of the sentence, although we do not know in what context it has been spoken. In order to better understand this, let us see some more examples of words. In the first oval, we have the word mud pie, storybook, singing. In the second oval, the words are fairy tales, sleeping, night. And in the third oval, cooking, mommy and trees. And can we term these random words as phrases? And the obvious answer is no. They are just random words which make absolutely no sense. Now, a clause is also a group of words that makes some sense. Then what is the crucial difference between a phrase and a clause? How can we differentiate between them? And the answer is that a clause must have a subject and a finite verb of its own. In these examples, we, t and who are the subject, whereas met, produced and singing are the finite verbs. This brings us to our next topic that is finite and infinite verbs. What is the difference between them? How do we define them? Let us see an example to understand this distinction. The example is, we are going to shop for a wedding dress. In this sentence, we have two verbs, that is, are going and to shop. Now, in these two verbs, are going is the finite verb and to shop is the infinite verb. The reason is that are going is bound by rules. It has a tense, it must agree with the subject in person and number. For example, if we change we into I, we get the sentence, I am going to shop for a wedding dress. And if we change the we to she, we get the sentence, she is going to shop for a wedding dress. The helping verb are changes according to the subject of the sentence. However, when we talk about the infinite verb to shop, it retains the same form. It doesn't change in any way. It, there are no rules on it. It is not bound by any rules. For example, in all the examples, we can see that to shop remains the same. It does not change. Having understood the difference between a phrase and a clause, and the difference between a finite and an infinite verb, let us now understand whether is every clause a sentence or is every sentence a clause. For this, let's take up another example. That boy who is wearing the red shirt is my brother. Over here we have two clauses. The first clause is who is wearing the red shirt and the second clause is, that boy is my brother. In the first clause, we can see that there is some meaning, but 
it is not complete thus a clause may not be a sentence in the second clause however we can see that the meaning is complete as the meaning is complete thus it can be considered a sentence as it also has a subject and a finite verb thus it is also a clause so we can conclude that every sentence is a clause but every clause is not a sentence okay let us now study the sentence a sentence is a group of meaningful words and the words are arranged in a proper order it has a subject and a predicate it begins with a capital letter and ends with a full pause like full stop question mark or the exclamation mark to fully understand the different concepts let us now compare the phrase the clause and the sentence the phrase has no finite verb and it cannot stand on its own on the other hand the clause has one finite verb and may or may not stand on its own the sentence has at least one finite verb and it can always stand on its own let me now introduce you to their families the phrases and clauses are three brothers each they are named adjective adverb and noun the adjective phrase or a clause acts as an adjective and is called an adjective phrase or an adjective clause for example let's study the table the adjective is a kind hearted lady and its phrase will become a lady with a kind heart however the clause will be a lady who is kind second example the adjective is dejected soul its phrase will become soul full of dejection and the clause will be soul which is dejected the third example is chinese tea the phrase will be tea produced in china and the clause will be tea that is produced in china in these clauses who which and that act as a subject of the clause and the verbs is and is produced act as the finite verb one very important rule by using these adjective phrases or clauses that must be remember is that they must be placed close to the noun they describe in order to understand the importance of this rule let us study the first two sentences the first sentence is we bought an led from an electronics good shop having a 52 inch screen and the second sentence is we bought an led having a 52 inch screen from an electronics good shop in both the sentences the adjective phrase that is having a 52 inch screen has been displaced in the first sentence it is placed next to electronics good shop and in the second sentence it is placed to an led in the first sentence there is no meaning when we look at the phrase associated with the noun electronics good shop however when we associate the phrase having a 52 inch screen with the noun and led the sentence becomes meaningful thus the adjective phrase must be placed close to the noun it describes the adjective phrase having a 52 inch screen can be turned into a clause by introducing a subject and a finite verb and the sentence will become we bought an led which has a 52 inch screen from an electronics good shop here which is the subject and has is the finite verb now the second brother is the adverb a phrase or a clause that acts as an adverb is called an adverb phrase or clause 
an adverb modifies the verb it tells us how something is being done some adverbs like early late and abroad can be changed into the adverbial phrase for example early will become at an early hour late will become after the appointed time and abroad will become in a foreign land similarly the adverbial phrases can also be changed into adverbial clauses for example at sunset we return to a camp can be written as when the sun set we returned to a camp the third brother is the noun a phrase or a clause that acts as a noun in a sentence is called a noun phrase or a noun clause now the noun phrase or clause can be placed both in the subjective or in the objective position for example as a noun phrase our thoughts give shape to a character in this sentence our thoughts is the noun phrase its noun clause will become what we think gives shape to a character in this sentence what we think is the noun clause similarly as an object the example is he seems to be a man of integrity a man of integrity is the noun phrase and the sentence it seems that he is a man of integrity in this sentence that he is a man of integrity is the noun clause having dealt with the family of phrases and clauses we find that sentence is also a family of three brothers the simple sentence the compound sentence and the complex sentence the first brother the simple sentence as the name suggests has a lot of simplicity it is generally a short sentence but sometimes it can also be a long sentence for example dr kalam attained success through relentless efforts dedicated determination and unflinching perseverance overcoming all kinds of temptations and facing severe criticisms looking at such a big line we feel that how can this sentence be a simple sentence but the answer is that this sentence has only one finite verb that is attained all the other verbs like dedicated overcoming facing are non finite verbs thus a simple sentence can have only one finite verb another point to keep in mind when dealing with the simple sentence is that it may have a double subject or a double object for example krish and rishi participated in the competition in this sentence krish and rishi are double subject in the second sentence goldilocks ate the porridge and the pie in this sentence porridge and the pie are double objects however in both the sentences they have only one finite verb in the first sentence the finite verb is participated and in the second sentence the finite verb is ate thus the rule is very important that the simple sentence can have only one finite verb the second brother the compound sentence is made up of two or more principal or main clauses this means that each of the clause is of equal rank and the clauses are known as coordinate clauses the coordinate clauses are always joined by a coordinating conjunction and if the subject of two clauses is the same the subject in the second clause is often omitted for example he drank juice and had an egg over here the subject of both the clauses drank juice and had an egg is the same that is he thus he is not written again and again we can also interpret this as that when two or more simple sentences are joined by a coordinating conjunction then the result will be a compound sentence at this point it is very important to understand coordinating conjunctions because the distinction between compound and complex sentences 
is more clear when we can understand the coordinating conjunction and the subordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunctions are of four categories. The first one is cumulative conjunction. The second is adversative conjunctions. The third one is disjunctive or alternative conjunctions. And the fourth one is elative conjunctions. Now, cumulative conjunctions merely means the words which are used when adding one statement to another. For example, and, both, and, as well as, no less than, not only, but also, they can all be classified as cumulative conjunctions. Adversative conjunctions express opposition or contrast between two statements. For example, words like but, still, yet, nevertheless, whereas, while only can be classified as adversative conjunctions. Disjunctive or alternative conjunctions express a choice between two alternatives. For example, words like either or, or, neither nor, otherwise and else. The elative conjunctions express an inference. Words like for, so, therefore are the examples of elative conjunctions. The third brother, the complex sentence, is a very naughty brother. It is made up of a principal or a main clause and one or more subordinate clauses. The subordinate clauses are not of equal rank with the principal or the main clause. They are dependent upon the principal or the main clause. Moreover, the subordinate clauses are joined by a subordinating conjunction. Unlike a compound sentence, the complex sentence cannot be split. For example, the sun rose and the fog disappeared. This is a compound sentence and it can be split into two simple sentences. The sun rose, the fog disappeared. On the other hand, the sentence, my mother is happy because father bought her a diamond necklace is an example of a complex sentence. This sentence cannot be split into two sentences. There will be no meaning to one of the sentences. For example, my mother is happy. The meaning is complete. However, the subordinate clause because father bought her a diamond necklace is an incomplete sentence as it is dependent upon the main clause that is my mother is happy in order to make complete sense. The subordinating conjunctions can be broadly classified into three categories. Those which introduce the noun clause, those which introduce the adjective clause and those which introduce the adverb clause. For example, the words which introduce the noun clause are that and if or whether. For example, she realized that people cannot always be manipulated to suit one's purpose. And the second example is, she asked the manager if she could apply for one day leave. In these sentences that people cannot always be manipulated to suit one's purpose is the noun clause. And in the second sentence, if she could apply for one day leave, is again a noun clause. Relative pronouns like who, whom, which, what, that generally introduce the adjective clauses. For example, I would like to meet the sculptor who sculpted this statue. Over here, who sculpted this statue is the adjective clause. Similarly, words which introduce the adverb clause are words which talk about the time, for example, when, whenever, before, after, till, since, as soon as, while, as. And one of the sentences is, when the last shipment was unloaded, it was found to be defective. Over here, when the last shipment was unloaded is the adverb clause. And the second kind of adverb clause is introduced with the words where and wherever. They indicate the place. For example, 
I will go wherever my heart takes me. Over here, I will go is the main clause. On the other hand, wherever my heart takes me is the adverb clause. Words which talk about cause or reason. For example, words like because, since, as also introduce the adverb clause. For example, lent your boat to God in gratitude because the harvest had been plentiful. Over here, because the harvest had been plentiful is the adverb clause. Similarly, when there are words which talk about result or consequence, for example, words like so that, such that, then also they introduce the adverb clause. For example, she had grown so thin that she looked just like a scarecrow. Again in the sentence, the tsunami hit Japan with such ferocity that no dwelling was left standing. We can see the way that the subordinating conjunctions such and that have been used to introduce the adverb clause. Words like so that, that, in order that or lest which show the purpose also introduce the adverb clause. For example, the boy faked being ill so that he could skip school. Adverbs like if, unless which show the condition or adverbs like though, although, even if, even though which show concession or contrast or adverbs like as, as or than which show comparison and finally adverbs like as, as if, as though which show the manner are also used to introduce the adverb clauses. For example, in the sentences, you can get a cake if you bring me all the ingredients or in the sentence, you cannot leave unless you finish all your work. The clauses, if you bring me all the ingredients and the second clause, unless you finish all your work, are example of adverb clauses. Similarly, the sentence, though she likes him, she has refused to marry him. In this sentence, though she likes him, is an adverb clause. Again, in the sentence, this company is as influential as the previous one is also an example of an adverb clause. And finally, the sentence, they accepted all my proposals as they always do, as they always do is the adverb clause. Let us now quickly sum up what we have learnt about the three brothers. The simple sentence has only one subject. On the other hand, the complex sentence may need more than one subject. Similarly, the compound sentence may also need more than one subject. In the simple sentence, we can have only one finite verb. In the complex sentence and in the compound sentence, we need more than one finite verb. The simple sentence does not require any linker. But the complex sentence and the compound sentence require linkers. The simple sentence is like a nuclear family. Whereas the complex sentence is like a joint family. And it loves subordinating conjunctions. The compound sentence lives independently with other tenants. And it loves coordinating conjunctions. Let us now do a quick recap of this entire topic. The clause is made up of one subject and one finite verb. The principal or the main clause can stand on its own, but the subordinate clause cannot stand on its own. It is dependent upon another clause to make sense. The coordinating clauses are of equal rank. The sentence can have one or more than one clause. The simple sentence can have only one clause. On the other hand, the compound sentence is made up of two or more main clauses. The complex sentence must have one principal clause and one or more subordinate clauses. With this, we come to the end of our topic. I hope that now 
this difficult topic is very easy for you. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Renews Englishpedia and please also remember to hit the bell button to get notifications regarding new videos. Thank you.